Maayong hapon halin sa Iloilo Museum of Contemporary Art. I am Joshua and I will be your host for this afternoon. We at Ilomoka would like to share with you our latest project titled Timplada, The Art of Ilongo Cuisine. This project was created to support Iloilo City's application to the UNESCO Creative Cities for Gastronomy. This is composed of an art exhibition at Hulut Gallery in Ilomoka, a series of online educational programs called Merienda Talks, and lastly, an Iloilo City food map. This Merienda Talk is sponsored by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, the University of the Philippines Visayas, Bibal Group, Canva, The Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf, Iloilo Business Park and Festive Walk Iloilo, the Food Writers Association of the Philippines, the Dor Dorian Gamboa Fernandez Food Writing Award, the Museum of Philippine Economic History, Museum of Philippine Social History, Our Awesome Planet, and Kaunta Iloilo. October is Museums and Galleries Month. Thank you for joining us this Saturday for our first live stream of the month, where we will be talking about how to get millennials on board when it comes to heritage food. Before we start, we'd like to know where you're watching from and what is your favorite kakanin. Just comment below your answers and we'll talk about it after the presentation. Speaker today is Ms. Marie Joy Rosal Sumagaysay an assistant professor of the Division of Humanities at the University of the Philippines, Visayas. Today, Ma'am Joy will be sharing best teaching practices which integrate, integrate heritage food appreciation into the classroom setup. Marie Joy Rosal Sumagaysay is an assistant professor at the University of the Philippines, Visayas, under the Department of Humanities. She received her bachelor's degree in sec secondary education from the West Visayas State University in 1990 and proceeded to earn her master's degree in art history in the University of the Philippines, Diliman. With her thesis on Spanish colonial cemeteries of Iloilo, she found herself in cultural heritage work and eventually gravitated towards researching and promoting local food and culture. She is a recipient of the 2019 Doreen Gamboa Fernandez Food Writing Award for her entry about the Southern Iloilo Carinderias Linabog, made with coconut milk and turmeric. She takes great pride in her students' outputs in Karankon, uh, nicknamed Onon Congress, where they showcase little-known Ilongo food artisans in an exhibition. Let's welcome Ma'am Joy to the live stream. Hi, Ma'am Joy. Hello, Josh. So, we'll start na kita. Maayong hapon. Yeah, Ma'am. Maayong hapon sa inyong atanan. Uh, thank you, Ilomoka, for uh, inviting me. Although, honestly, I'm not comfortable doing uh, Zoom on a national scale. But sige, let's do this at, uh, to our audience uh, watching today. I hope you'll be able to get something that you can also apply in your teaching. So uh, before I proceed, I'd like to dedicate this presentation this afternoon to a good friend, Gemma Ambed, who is a master sumanetic maker. She passed away last week. So she and her mother make exceptional sumanatik using lye or lydia from Kulitis plants. Um, so uh, just a little more about me through pictures. Uh, anybody in our audience, anyone who can guess uh, what market that is will get a prize from me. Uh, Tablia from Alimudjan. So, tingnan na lang ni Diyos kung may tamang sagot dyan. The market that I visited in that photo four years ago. If anyone is familiar with that, uh, come and guess 
Okay, so the two, um, please explain my interest in heritage, food, and culture. I'm very at home in markets, you know. I love markets. It's my happy place. And uh, so the picture on the right is uh, Haro Market, so vintage photo. My grandfather's father and my grandfather's siblings were all matadors or butchers at the Haro Market. So uh, when I was young, I would spend my summers and Christmas vacations there. And uh, I would always look forward to Wednesdays and Thursdays when the sleepy market uh, came alive. Yeah. And on my father's side, the, the Rosals, they are from Ligao Albay. And my late father and his siblings were all excellent cooks. And they were very picky about food, quality, and taste. So that explains. Now here, some more photos. This is what I love to do. Maybe you'd like to follow my IG. No, I'm just joking. I'm not really after, after followers. Um, I set up this IG account because so that I can I can save the documentations that I do food related activities. So the both got from photo. Those are the two amazing women, Nanay Tapro and Gemma. Gemma is the daughter. She passed away in September. And uh, you can get to appreciate them in a food documentary that was sponsored by Chad that we made. It's called Batik. So I will share the link uh, with Ilomata. You can watch it and you will see and be amazed at what they're able to do and the values that they hold. The rest of the photos, they are what I do. I love taking photos of heritage, food, and culture uh, whenever I happen to be in that place. Uh, the, that Takanin top photo with the green heart shaped leaf, which is Talos, that's Sapal. Uh, it's an endangered rice cake already. It used to be popular in the entire Panayan region, but so far only two women make this in Subhanu. Uh, at the same time, I have this snack for getting into a conversation with good artisans and purveyors. Like, for example, the photo on the top right. She's Manandili. She sells, she makes roasted peanuts in Antigua. So I, I love talking to them and we should really have a healthy together. Uh, what else do I do? I also love to cook uh, both heritage food and also uh, international food. Like the photo, uh, that's tacos that I made for friends, and we, I use Molo wrappers as the, as the chef. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our subject, the millennials. Okay, how's this? Okay, is it good? All right. Uh, millennials, so the photos, how are they portrayed? What is our impression of them? Diba, uh, these young people love to go to cafes that are modern and they love to eat Western food. That's the impression. They're also very fashionable, Western fashion. And uh, they, they, are, they like to express themselves and they tend to be self-centered, they say. But they're also very creative. They're very uh, adept in the digital world. So it's the impression of them being very modern and not knowing much and not caring about our own heritage food. That is the issue. That's the concern. 
And I have seen that with students as the years go by, parang more and more are getting detached. Like they don't even know what Ubos is. They don't know what Pansipolo is. And I think that is a cause for alarm because with all this influx of Western culture, the social media, we might lose our very own. Like they, they will no longer connect with it. And then what happens is going to be sad for, for our country. So after having been with young people for the past 25 years of teaching, um, I have come to the conclusion that, that these millennials, next slide please. This is my thesis. With creative approaches done in love, my love, paha, millennials should, uh, millennials become the best ambassadors to the rich group. Yes, ambassadors. Without them, if we don't campaign, you know, in this creative manner, without without making it look, it look like a campaign, huh? With, um, if we don't introduce them to how wonderful our own food is, we are going to cut the connection. And that is a concern. And I have concluded that pag creative tayo, let's go to the next slide. If we, uh, these are the approaches that I have employed. Written outputs, workshops, pop-ups, infographs, art support, food walks, food theme rampa, creative food mapping, and video outputs. So what I'm going to do here is to show you through pictures what I have done, have been doing, and hopefully you'll, you'll get ideas from here. I will also uh, explain to you, I will elaborate on the strategies and I will share with you, with our teacher audience, how the activity was conducted and its impact on the students. So let's start with written outputs. So as I was saying, let's start with written outputs. Um, siguro, talagang idol ko lang si Ms. Doreen because um, at least a writing course ko before, Home 2, um, nahanapan ko ng paraan na food yung maging topic instead of some abstract and overused topics like pollution, deforestation, prostitution, lahat ng siyon. So na boring na talaga yun. So what I did in my comfy class, di naman sa nagmamayabang ako, pero itong strategy na hinimay-himay namin yung essay ni Doreen sa food magazine at sa Inquirer, and para makita nila how Doreen brings in primary and secondary, secondary sources into her essay. Also, I made the, state, the students distinguish the ideas that Doreen herself thought of versus the ideas that she gathered from her, from her references and from her field work. I think this is an important skill that students need to master if they are writing, whether it's a thesis or just a simple essay with citations. Because these days, there are students who plagiarize a lot, no? And they tend to claim ideas that are not theirs just because they found it online. So that's what I did. Ginawang creative para hindi boring. So after nila dinaisek ang essay ni Ms. Doreen, I made them do their own essay about a food that they remember from their childhood and they patterned the format after Doreen's work. And I have to say, I, I was very pleased with their outputs. May I emphasize also that as teachers, for all these activities, it's important that we supervise closely 
and we give feedback. Hindi pwede na isang send lang, isang pasa lang ng output. Yun na yun. At bibigyan na ng grade. Hindi. When we're doing this type of um, activity or project or yes, a writing, a writing output, it's important that the teacher corrects it or points out what's missing and gives it back to the student for the student to rewrite. I'd like to emphasize that point. Kasi akala natin, kung maganda na yung layout, na nasisilaw tayo sa layout, no? sa parang grabe yung font, ang ganda ng papel, mabango, etc. Hindi yon. That's not the concern. The concern is the writing part. So that's what I would always do. Binabalik sa students, then they come up with the second draft, hanggang third draft. Yeah. So, ganon. Medyo alam ng mga students ko yan na nag-graduate na talagang si Ma'am Joy nila ay very mauti, very meticulous. And I tell them, you know, maybe you will hate me for this now, but someday you, you will understand why, why we have to do it that way. Okay. Next slide. Ito. Itong masaya. Bookshops and pop-ups. So, um, what about it? I think I coined that term para sa mga ginagawa ko. The impact sa students ng ganito ay nako. Millennials, you see, are very multi-sensory. No? Uh, because they are overloaded with information from school, from their classes, and from overload also from cell phone, FB, and social media. Having them participate, participate, work with their hands, cook, and then taste heritage food the impact is definitely positive. I have seen that. Uh, for instance, the first photo on the left, these are Pisay students. Pisay, I was invited to give a bookshop, a lecture, a short, a short PowerPoint lecture muna of rice cakes in Asia. After that, we did this palitaw or muasit making bookshop. And they so enjoyed the activity. We did that in, uh, I think, three hours. Alam nyo, yung pagkapisay nila na very science, di ba yung palitaw, dapat round lang. Hinayaan ko lang sila. They ended up making creative shapes like sperm, like mga kung ano-ano. Science talaga. So yun, that was very memorable for them. So, uh, the impact is positive. It stays with them. And the chances of them exploring more of our local food becomes very high. The second and the third photo, that's a culminating activity for class, arts class. And I said, sige, medyo very, medyo boring or very sad ngayon yung building natin. Walang food. No, it's always junk food available. Hira ka makakita ng healthy food usually sa schools, no? Um, soda, chuchiria, may mga sting pa nga, at saka, ano, pan, kopiko, kopiko. Anyway, so I said, come up with your cafe, make it artsy, and, you know, these students, when you motivate them well, ay, nako, magugulat ka sa ginagawa nila. So everybody helps out, and they came up with a cafe they called Handumanan. And look at what we served. Saging, kamote. No. And the students in UP, the other students who were not part of my class, look forward to it. No? So, bibili sila ng saging, 5 pesos. Tapos, ang Mindanao style pala, i-dip siya sa dinamos. Doon, na-surprise ako because that's not Ilonggo, and the, the Mindanao students relished it. And we also had native coffee. So my advocacy is to promote local. So I go, let's not, let's do away with sachets. No, let's do native. 
The fourth picture is another cookshop I did with another group of students. Pansit Molo cookshop yan. Three hours. Three hours day. So I taught them how to wrap pansit molo correctly. Kasi makala ng iba, ang pansit molo, ang pag-wrap parang show mine. Hindi, di ba? Iba yung art of wrapping pansit molo. And after they cooked it, they uh, enjoyed it with the uh, bispocho and kinihad. Okay. So the third kind or the third approach that I do is infographs. Uh, magaling ang mga millennials sa mga ganito. Di ba? Uh, pero dapat guided sila at my feedbacking ng teachers. Um, the first one, this is also from the Pisay group, the workshop that I did. In 15 minutes, nagpa-contest ako. I divided the class into four groups and I said, okay, here's one paper and some markers. Um, in 15 minutes, draw as many Ilonggo karanunon or yeah, kakanin in Tagalog, no? but we say karanunon or kalanunon in Ilonggo. Draw as many Ilonggo kalanunon as you can remember. Magugulat ka because many of them miss, miss, ano na ang, ano na ang pangalan sina? Ano ang pangalan na? They would describe the kakanin but they don't know the names. You see? So here's one. It's, it's so nice. But I encircled sa pin sa pin. So I gave feedback after. Sa pin sa pin is not very long ago, no? Uh, although we get to see that in markets now. But you see, look at that. In 15 minutes, we were able to do that. Wouldn't that look nice on a shirt? Okay, the second one. Wow, fantastic work. This is by a former student. She's now in medical school. But she's an artist at the same time. So, so that's her concept. Um, I gave suggestions to anong mga topics. And voila, the drafts go back and forth. Hindi yan perfect the first time. And so when students sense that you are committed to helping them better the work, they come up with the best version. And they're eager to do it. They themselves want to see the work refined. So with the Tinoom, because I saw so much potential in it, I said, okay, once you've submitted this as an output for the course, after that, I'm going to help clean up those, those um, directions. Or Because it's, if, we're going to, if we're going to share this with more people, then we, I, we have to make sure that the texts are accurate. So that's it. My dream for this is to make a calendar with, say, 12 of these. That would be nice. And the third, also fantastic, amazing output from three students. I encourage them to survey three towns and see uh, and look for pinapay, breads with interesting names. And so they documented that. Interesting names, mga amu-amu, no, mga sputnik, things like that. So infographs are a very fun way of making them fall in love with heritage food. Let's go to the next strategy. Art support for food artisans. What is this? Another project, oh, by the way, I don't do all of this in one semester, no? So there's a variety. Sometimes I would introduce this one, another time something else. But this one is, uh, I made them do a practical project. For example, these labels. So they made labels for this heritage artisans empanada. 
and they they give these labels to the artisan. It makes the artisan very happy. You know? And they also become very happy because the artisan feeds them. Gives them the tamblea, gives them picking. Picking is also from Antique. I think Bohol also has it. You know, these are cassava, cassava squares, twice cooked. Uh, first, it has to be grated, such a tedious process. Grated and then shaped, flattened, and then sun-dried. Then you fry it. So you, this can replace your wheat nachos, actually. So art support. I, I recall one, one group decided to make a tarpaulin for, for a shoemaker. Yeah in downtown because his stall was not so visible. So they made a tarp for that uh, artisan. So it, these are very practical uh, outputs. Next please. Ah, food walks. Okay. If we talk of impact on millennials, uh, this approach is tops. I have seen that through the years. It's really tops. Um, one student said, Mom, it's so life-changing. Life-changing. Especially when we still did our Antique heritage tours. Yeah, we did a two-day heritage tour jam-packed with different genres. There's sculpture, there's food, music. Okay, and music, all of that. And then they had nature also. So, but these days, prior to the pandemic, we weren't able to do it anymore because of uh, restrictions about going out on trips. But, you know, this is the impact is so great, more than what we could learn in the classroom because it's firsthand. They get to meet the artisans, they get to see how the work is done. And so the appreciation is, is there, it's live. Whereas if I just lecture in class and then show them a PowerPoint of the photos of Antique, hola, it will not resound with them, with anybody, yeah. So may I say it again? Um, there are some, some mentors who, when they go on field trips, just leave the, leave the kids alone. No, uh, sorry, I have to say this, but I have observed nung uso pa yung mga trips, no? they come in bus loads, pupunta ng museum, ang dali-dali, no? or pupunta ng church, zooming hot lang sa church, five minutes. After that, they go back to the jeepney or the bus because ang ending, macho shopping sa mall. So that defeats the purpose of a heritage tour. No? So there's, there must be an output. Hindi pwedeng enjoy, enjoy lang sila na walang processing ng reflections nila. So I make them do written reflections at dun mo mag-gauge if, if uh, dun mo mag-gauge how much they have gained from the experience. Yes. Uh, the photo of, yeah, that Antique Heritage Tour photo is the lower left. That's a traditional breakfast of uga, dried fish, binamos, boiled egg, um, sarasara, you know, sarasara, um, rice coffee. So the students had this 6 a.m. breakfast and Behind them is the beach. So they sat on the sand and looked at the beach and ate their breakfast. Very memorable. The picture above that antique breakfast is literally a food walk. We were walking along the streets of Molo. It was a Molo food walk that I designed to be finished in two hours. So we visited Pasit Molo. Empanada, we had uh, coffee, there was barbecue, yeah, so 
you can see in the faces of these students, they really enjoyed it a lot. Ah, yes, in Panaderia de Molo, we were able to see the bakery itself with the huge brick oven. Uh, that's a bok choy taste test. I would bring students to Central Market because there are several bok choyans inside. And it's a blind taste test. So tatlong brands ng bok choy, and they would taste each one. Then there would be a poll after. But the poll we would do outside the market because pinitingnan kami ng mga manugbat choy. Itingnan kung sino ang most preferred. It's a matter of things. So if please do not ask me what is the best bat choy in Iloilo, ha? It's a matter of things. But I, I, yeah, I have my own preference too. And the fourth one is uh, an instant food tour that I did with students I saw downtown. They were taking photos of our Chinatown. And I said, would you like to join me? Let's go uh, and check out some places. Yeah. So some are planned, some are unplanned. But definitely this has an impact, leaves an impact on the students. And they, will all, they always remember these things. Okay, the next one, another exciting approach. Yes, it's a food-themed fashion show. If Ilomoka has a food-themed visual art exhibit coming soon, uh, this is what I have done with several classes. Kung impact ng ang pag-uusapan, both on the entire class who all helped it put together and also of the audience. Ito talaga, this is, everyone's blown away at what they're able to do. Okay? And these are not even fashion and design majors. These students in the photos, these are accountancy majors and management majors. Some are poli-sci, some are chemistry. They're not even design majors yet. They, they did that, no? So blown away talaga when they started to rampa down, down our improvised catwalk in the auditorium, everybody was in awe. So how did I do? How did we do? I gave, I gave six, six or eight uh, food, long food. For example, ABL, Inoom, Batsoy, Pansit Molo, Laswa, Dinuguan. And I tell them, bahala na kayo how you're going to transform that into a fashion piece. What is your interpretation of that? And that's what they came up with. I think the green one, the one in green, that's Pinoom. And I think this one with the egg yolks, uh, yeah, with the eggs as the headdress, that's... Uh, I think that's bat choy. Medyo abstract. So you get two kinds of interpretation. Just like in Miss Universe, there's abstract interpretation of, of uh, a concept. There's also that literal, no, just like Miss Thailand with the, was it Vietnam, with the Mong Kok and then the noodles talaga. So amazing. I would like to emphasize, it's in my notes, Please do not allow your class to outsource or to tap outsiders to do the creative stuff for them. Yes, I noticed that in some elementary schools, whenever they have a contest for, for a show like a fashion show or, or Miss UN or something, the class chips in or contributes money tapos there are designers in the community, pati makeup artists, pati kung sino magturo, magrampa. Everything is outsourced. Tapos, the class, all that the class does is to pay. I think that defeats the purpose. You have to believe in the capacity of your students to do it by themselves. What happens with that? They become spectators. No? Nagbayad lang sila. Oh, contribute 100. 
Tapos ibayad dun sa designer, gagawa ng gown, gagawa ng headdress. Tapos pagdating ng actual show, manonood lang ang, ang classmates. Wala silang participation. So, if you want to do something like this, make sure and and be strict about it. And tell them, wala tayong babayaran na designer or makeup or what. Kayo lahat ang gagawa. And you will be amazed at the hidden talents of your students. Everybody's going to help out. Okay? Sige po. Ngayon, uh, ilan na ba? So I told you about written outputs, cookshops, pop-ups, infographs, art support, food walks, the rampa. Ngayon, this is the karantpon. Okay? Um, I had an FB group before called Friends of Cuisina Ilonga. Tapos, um, we got close and we would talk about Ilonga food. And I said one time, why don't we meet? Let's do a potluck. Kanya-kanyang dala, kanya-kanyang bit-bit ng any Ilongo snack. Tapos, let's just share the food. And that's how it started. Then a colleague, thank you, Eman, Eman Lerona, suggested, Ma'am Joy, why don't you call it Karanton? Short for Karanunon Congress. It's not really an academic thing. It's just a play of words. So, naging, nag-stick yung name, Karanton. And the rest is history. So that's, we started, I think, 2017. And I tapped my students that semester, one section. I said, can you help organize the event? Uh, you will get free food. Plenty of free food. <laughs> so, yun. Uh, watch this video, please. Siyempre, made by a millennial, one of the students in the class. Taliyumbo. Taliyumbo. Princess. Princess. Good afternoon, love. So we did it in a heritage house in a conception chalet. We invited a manuglibod, you know, the one who sells uh, rice cakes and flies the streets of of Haro of La Paz, selling the rice cake for the afternoon. So we invited her. We also invited the empanada maker, Cherry, and we gave them time to talk. This is Annaline. Annaline. Listen to her how she falls out of her hair. Thank you. So that's how it started. So uh, it was very inspiring. So after that, this is what happened. We were able to do five, one for every semester. So students would design these posters and I would just uh, give my input and some changes, but it's all done by them. So we have done five current ones so far prior to, to the closure of schools. And the fifth one, 
uh, was done by my colleagues. They said, Ma'am Joy, can we adopt Tarantuan? And I said, by all means, go ahead. Do it with your students. So that Tarantuan got bigger. And it got bigger because we went to an LGU, the town of Balasan. Ah, no, before that, please. These are the things that happened in the current one. Next slide, please. So there's a lot of eating because there's the food that is uh, before the food there's a poster the output of the students the research output is up is to research about the food artisan after that they have to make a poster of that artisan and they have to put their write up in the poster Shempre, you won't really get perfect outputs again that's where the teacher comes in because the teacher helps to edit because if it's going to be shown to the public, you cannot have a very rough writing. No? So I really took time to clean up their, their statements. And then, like this girl here, so that's the poster that she made behind her. And the food, which are kalamay saburi. So the food is present together with the poster. That's the idea. And after that, there's a short program where heritage food artisans are invited. In this case, in the photo, that is the grandfather of that boy mismo. That's his lolo. And his lolo was 87 at the time. And his source of livelihood was making ibos. Yes. So afterwards, he taught everybody how to make ebos, how to wrap ebos. That's the cook shop part. So the current one event is multi-sensory. There's the poster, there's the food, there's the talks by the heritage artisans, and there's the cook shop, and there's the eating afterwards. By the way, the eating is free. It's free. And although the class puts a donation box, so you can put in money to help defray the, the expenses. That's how it's done. So we hope we can do more when schools open. Now we went to Balasan because the LGU invited me and said, Mom, can you do a current one in Balasan? And it's a food mapping project for the municipality. Now we come to the last teaching strategy that, um, I don't know, before that. So this is what we did. It's a one day event, mapping event, where the teachers of the six national high schools in Balasan participated. And I insisted that they must bring two or three student artists with them during the workshop because the student artists did their posters and did yeah, the layout. So there's a collaboration between the teachers and the young. Without the young people, there's no, it's all going to be enjoyed by older people. So there's no transfer of appreciation to the young. And this is the output. In one day, by three o'clock, they were able to gather the rice cakes and display it in their auditorium with their arrangements together with the poster that they printed from a, from a printer on hand. Then the mayor himself came and did an open a ribbon cutting ceremony all in one day. So now Balasan has documented more than 12. They used to think that all they had was RCJ Balasan Binka, which is so delicious, by the way. But now they have discovered that they have 12 to 13, and it's growing uh, heritage food. This one is fantastic. This is alupi. It's alupi, and it has a haleya feeling. There's ube or kamote haleya inside the alupi made of cassava. Nobody does that. I haven't seen Anyone do that in other towns? So only in Balasan. All right. So uh, we come to the very last strategy that has great impact on many aspects. And these are the video outputs. 
I what I like the most about this strategy of making them do video outputs is that aside from the heightened interest for heritage food and culture, it's the emotional and relational impact on the students. It does something to their, to, you know, to their spirit and to their relationship in the home or in the community. You will see that in the videos. Okay, so I used to do this format before. It is a documentary type. You can see this in YouTube. I, we're not playing it here. But yes, traditional salt making and gibwongan niyagaw. I'm not sure if they're still doing it yet these days, but I hope it doesn't disappear. Now let's go to the next. Uh, I'd like to focus. Uh, video outputs during this remote mode while in, we're in this situation. Oh, by the way, that is my Blue Suman. I developed that uh, Blue Suman and Blue Putumaya. If only we are in a face-to-face -face setting, I would have wanted to share it with you. Okay. So uh, what do I want to say here? I think... Uh, there's so much anxiety and the students are overwhelmed during this remote mode of learning. So I thought I don't want to add to their burden that um, this time I thought of a um, video uh, project. I narrowed it down and clearly specified what I will be looking for in the video. And it's short, it's just three minutes. So I really spelled it out clearly in my instructions. This is what we are looking for in your video. Do this and uh, you get a perfect score. So this time it's a vlog format. Now I want to show you three videos. Um, the first one is a full length. I will going to show the entire length because this is the work of my student, very good professional editing. She's really good with this. And she's the one who helped me with my slides, by the way. Thank you, Myra. So we submitted her entry to Mama Sita actually last year. So uh, please enjoy. <laughs> Ako po ay taga Ibaan, Batangas. Duwi pong undas or November 1 ang usually pong niluluto ng mami nung kami ay maliliit pa ay pinindot at palitaw. Ever since we were little, our holidays have been a mixture of Batangueño and Ilonggo cultures. With every vacation in my mom's hometown in Ibaan, Lola always spoiled us with a delicious kakani. This piesta minatay, we have decided to make palitao. This is the Luzon version of the Ilonggo Muasi. The ingredients are simple. Grated coconut, white sugar, sesame seeds, and glutinous rice flour. Originally, people used to have their sticky rice ground at the town market. But nowadays, one can just buy ready-to-use glutinous rice flour in packs. The way we make palitao is not any different from how others do. First, the sesame seeds are toasted until it becomes this light brown color. Two cups of glutinous rice are mixed with one cup of water. However, since I'm not really good with the measurements, I messed up. So I just added a few more tablespoons of rice powder to reach our desired consistency. The mixture is then kneaded enough to make sure that it can be molded into this round patty. While doing this, we already started to boil water in the pan. Malalaman mo po na yan ay luto na. Kung yan ay naglitaw na, dumaas na sa tubig na kumuha. Kaya po yung naging palitaw ang tawag. For the toppings, the roasted sesame seeds are mixed with the white sugar. But before that, each rice cake must be rolled on the grated coconut. Some people like to just sprinkle the sugar and sesame, but for us, we like to roll it on the mixture. And just like that, you have cooked your own palitao. You can serve this together with kuchinta, suman, puto, and pinindot. I know this.
this kind of delicacy is fairly easy to create, but for me, it was difficult. One, because I might not get it right. Two, because I might not live up to my grandmother's version. Palitao is just one of the many rice cakes in the country, and one out of a lot in the world. Japan, South Korea, and other neighboring countries have their versions too. We can't really say who made it first, but one thing is for sure. Rice cake traditions will most certainly thrive in places where rice is available. But these things aside, I think she's glad to see us continuing her recipes and sharing it with friends and family. This way, we are not only remembering her, but honoring her in the things she was most passionate about. Okay. So that's a wonderfully done um, blog. But this is what I want to say. Um, in this project, that I've been doing this pandemic for them, I made it clear that I am not grading it for creativity or editing skill. It has no bearing in the output. As you will see in the second one, it's very raw. So the, the Richard does not have very high skill with editing, but he still got the perfect score. Why? Because he did what was being asked. Three things was being asked in the project. And if you can complete all three, then it's good. So let's take a look at Richard here while he was husking the coconut. You can go to that One, part. Two, it's there. Uh, prior to that. You see, these students in UP, no, diba? they're very smart. But And although he lives in the province, a, a few more uh back a little more yes see he's very smart but he's a case of pampered students na hindi na pinapagawa sa bahay even if he's from a rural area so i really like what this project did nagbanding sila ng father ng mother tinuruan siya ng napaka-importante life skill Yes. Okay. So we can end it there. So, because isa yung sa requirements ng project, which is to try to open a coconut. This is the second semester. And the third video, I want to show you, is a young man na basta, tingnan nyo na lang. And so that's the part where you, the student, ask questions for for the parent or the grandparent. Tapos si mama niya talagang nagprepare. Iba ang cute. Now let's let's jump to the last part, the third part. This is what I really want to share with you. Can we increase the volume? out of this tradition. Okay. It serves as my connection to my ancestors. Ang nabatsagan ko, sang ginatuluan ko ni Mama Magluto, at sang nagbukan kami ng luto, ang umanilaban-laban ng nabatsagan ni Mama, sang ginatuluan siya ni Lola. Okay. Ang umanilaban-laban ng nabatsagan ni Lola, sang ginatuluan siya yeah. ni Mama niya. Ang umanilaban ng nabatsagan sang Mama ni Lola, sang ginatuluan siya ni Lola, there. and so on and so forth. Amazing. You can pause there. Thank you. Um, naman it's obvious now. This this young man was really feeling what he was saying. He highlighted two things. Na he's so thankful for the project because he was able to bond with his mother because they're not a very expressive family. And he felt the love of his mom. And he appreciated his heritage. So, we're right, almost done. I'm over time. This is my rubric for the blogs. So, just three tasks that I made them uh, accomplish. Interview the elder. 
cook the heritage dish, dish and then express their insights. Again, I did not grade their skill in editing and putting together their output. But you know what? These students, they don't need motivation for grades because they ended up doing very nice outputs, even if they knew that it was not a part of the game. So that's why I believe so much in these millennials. If guided properly, they will really give their best. Now to the last slide. That's a summary of what I have shared with you. I hope that there's something that you can pick up or if you're already doing it, um, do it even better. And so we are looking for mentors who have these qualifications, passionate, cares for millennials, and constant support for the students. These are the characteristics. So if you fit the mold, join us. And let's convert more young people and make them ambassadors. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, have a nice afternoon. Mayang hapon. Thank you so much, Ma'am Joy. That was a very insightful talk. I hope the teachers watching now have an idea on how to make uh, heritage culture easier to learn for their students. Uh, I, I know everyone was uh, was also curious to know, what's your favorite Takani? I have a dot. I don't have, I, I enumerate, enumerate several. Uh, I like Putumaya, something I discovered. It's mm -hmm. very long, it's one actually. Oh, I like, uh, you know what this? The Christmas bala. Oh my gosh, I cannot remember. Oh, Putubumbong. Putubumbong, yeah. And I found violet, purple, sticky rice in Antique. So I discovered that it's different from using ordinary pilet and just putting food coloring. It's different. The taste is different. Yeah. How do you describe the flavor, ma? There's that uh, parang coarse yet chewy texture. Really nice. Because personally, I love, uh, I don't know if it's inherently Ilongo, but I love uh, Kalame Hatin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, every time we we can go to the market, I always try to look for that. So I can so, them another reason why we get attached to a particular rice cake or kalanunon aside from the floor, is actually the memories that we associate with it. Yes. Speaking of memories, Ma'am Joy, uh, this is the last question along, so, uh, until we end this talk. Uh, what's your favorite memory from teaching students at, uh, at the school? The look on their faces. So when you see them beaming and you know, ay salamat, now there's somebody who can continue the tradition. Heritage food will will live on when you see na ay okay, mahal ka na with the lit song sumalatik ni na Rosa when they do that, ba? One time in CM, I was so happy. Uh, instead of ordering Jollibee or or mall food for their for their conference for the event, they asked for the number of na Rosa and ordered sumalatik. Because uh, I know at CM Talaga, there's a lot of fast food around. So that's really nice that they chose that option. Uh, to, close out, to close out the talk, Ma'am Joy, do you have any final words for our teachers? I, said, I think I said a lot already. I went over time. But uh, yeah, uh, let's, uh, let's continue and... Uh, when you have love in your heart, it's going to flow. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ma'am Joy, for joining us this afternoon. If you enjoyed this talk, we have a lot more in the coming months. This is our full schedule, as you can see in the screen, until December. So stay tuned to our Facebook page for more details on each live stream. 
Okay. I'm also inviting everyone to join us on October 9 at 3 p.m. at the Ilamoka Facebook page for another trivia time. The subject this time would be Filipino food, so make sure to brush up on your food facts. Uh, top winners will also get prizes. Our physical exhibit for Templada will open on October 8 at the Hulot Gallery. Visits will only be appointment-based, so make sure to visit our page to book an appointment using Facebook's Book Now button. For the ones who would prefer not to visit the physical space, we can you can visit our virtual exhibit using the QR code on the screen now. You can screenshot this slide so that you can visit the, uh, the exhibit later. We are also inviting everyone to join in this year's contest for the Doreen Gamboa Fernandez Food Writing Award. Uh, selected references, contacts of interviewees, and endnotes, if pertinent, will not be included in the word count. Submissions are a way to show substance, writing skill, concern, and passion for pleasure that only Filipino food can bring. Submit your entries using a pen name by November 30, 2021 to dgfawards at yahoo.com.ph. That's dgfawards at yahoo.com.ph. The 800 English language essay about shellfish will be judged according to content, which is 50%, research, which is 30%, and style, which is 20%, for a total of 100%. You can send in separately to the same address an ID file with your pen name, real name, address, email, landline, and mobile numbers. And each author will also be allowed to, to two entries. For inquiries about the contest, you can you can uh, send an email to pinoyfood04 at yahoo.com. That's pinoyfood04 at yahoo.com. Good luck to Philippine love, food-loving writers from around the world. Ilomoka also has a YouTube channel. We upload all of our live streams there, so make sure to follow Museums Matter on YouTube. That's Museums Matter. You can also like and follow our social media page for more updates. You can find us on Facebook as Ilomoka. Our tag on Instagram is at It's Ilomoka. And like I said before, our YouTube channel is Museums Matter. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can email us at ilomuseumofcontemporaryart at gmail.com. We'll be having a lot more contests where winners can take home goodies from Canva and CBTL, Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. So make sure to stay tuned to our social media pages. Again, thank you for joining us this Saturday. Salamat git, kagmayong hapon sa tanan.